Hello, I'm Mark Shaw, former criminal defense lawyer, legal analyst for ABC, ESPN, and USA Today, and the author of a new book, my 25th, The Poison Patriarch. It's written like a prosecutor laying out his case for a jury, and with this in mind, let's travel through the book so you'll know what to expect. First in the book, I make a strong accusation. Joseph P. Kennedy, the poison patriarch, killed his son John, the 35th president of the United States. Now, of course, Joe Kennedy didn't pull the trigger killing his son, but he might as well have through a regrettable decision he made that changed the course of history. The startling revelation and other facts and conclusions are featured in the book, one based on the eyewitness accounts of more than 40 people never published before. Doing so connects the dots between Jack Ruby, who killed Lee Harvey Oswald, and Melvin Belli, Ruby's attorney, to the one man who hated the Kennedys the most, and sadly, to the betrayals of Joseph P. Kennedy that led to his son's death. My journey to writing The Poison Patriarch may interest you because I did not start out to write about Joe Kennedy or to solve the most compelling cold case in history, the JFK assassination. I actually stumbled onto the evidence while writing a biography of Melvin Belli, Ruby's attorney, that was published in 2007. I knew Mr. Belli in the 1980s, and after his death in the mid-90s, my research led me to start asking questions about the validity of his representation of Ruby. Since there was something fishy about the case, including Belli telling conflicting stories about how he had become Jack Ruby's attorney in the first place. Being a curious fellow, as most defense lawyers are, I investigated further and began interviewing friends and colleagues who knew Mr. Belli while probing the Ruby trial. This led to the new evidence in the book indicating that Belli, mob connected through his L.A. gangster client Mickey Cohen, was hired by those who masterminded the assassinations to silence Jack Ruby as part of an exit strategy as part of a cover-up. Questions asked and answered in The Poison Patriarch include, who was the one desperate mafioso who hated the Kennedys, especially Bobby, more than any other, and planned the twin assassinations and the cover-up that followed in an act of revenge? What was this mafioso's motive for targeting JFK for assassination instead of Bobby in 1963? Why did Bobby Kennedy, then the Attorney General, tell a colleague shortly after learning of JFK's death, I thought they would get one of us, I thought it would be me. Why did Melvin Belli portray Jack Ruby as crazy at trial and refuse his client's request to testify, causing Ruby to say, I had no defense? Why did Belli tell a friend during the Ruby trial, it's fixed, we're just going through the motions, it's a whitewash, and why did Ruby prosecutor Bill Alexander tell this author that in 1963, I was surprised JFK was killed. I heard it would be Bobby because of all of his enemies. In my experience, cold cases are usually solved when new evidence comes to light, forcing us to look at the case with a new perspective. I believe that's important here, with my conclusion that we must focus on, for the first time, why Bobby Kennedy was not killed in 1963 instead of why JFK was. This fresh focus in the probe of the Ruby case, the missing piece to solving the greatest murder mystery in history, presents a book like none written before. Other authors and so-called assassination experts may rely on entertainment value or rumor or speculation or sensationalism, but in The Poison Patriarch, you will read first-hand accounts from those who were eyewitnesses to history. Amazingly enough, the truth was hiding in plain sight, but all those investigating the assassinations simply missed clues abounding, especially when it comes to the detective's best friend, common sense motives for the killing of JFK and Oswald. When you read The Poison Patriarch, you will understand that I wrote the book so that everyone will have access to this new evidence since it's imperative that for history's sake, we learn the truth about what happened in Dallas five decades ago. When you finish the book, I believe you'll also realize that Joe Kennedy reaped what he had sown in a scenario tantamount to a Greek tragedy with a complex moral structure where abuse of power and broken promises pervaded at every turn, culminating in betrayals, revenge, 
and ultimately murder. For 50 years, Joe Kennedy has gotten a pass on being ultimately responsible for the death of his son, the president, until now.